Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. In a world where everyone says hello, they dare to say, Yeah, yeah good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yes. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good day. Hey. Yeah. Good day. Yeah, g'day Tim. Yeah, g'day Leon. Yeah, g'day everyone. Yeah, g'day everyone. Welcome to Yeah, g'day, the complete guide to Australia. Yes, That's correct. It. That's all I got. Yes. One time we got feedback from a very famous professional podcast aficionado. Mm. That's French for person. It's not English. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he said that Sometimes our beginning conversations were a bit strange because we obviously live with each other and we don't, and we talk about our weeks. Yeah. Um, which has led me into this other awkward field where every time we start an episode, I say our tagline and then I'm like still not ready to start the episode. So then I do these kinds of stories. Yeah. And to be honest with you, Diane, I think... <laughs> Honestly, it probably alienates our audience even more. <laughs> yeah, I so, think it's gotten worse. Yeah. So we've, we've taken your feedback on board and we've really just pushed it in the wrong direction. Yeah, I found a way to fuck it up, yeah. um, as I do with everything. Wonderful. Tim, today's episode will be a good one, could be a short one, because my stomach is on borrowed time. Yeah, and um, my stomach needs some food. Yeah. Unrelated. Yeah, yeah, we're I'm hungry. We're hungry and we I'm sick. Yeah. Um unlike drunk Tim on Yeah. What a time. Right and I. What a time. I mm. am not currently wearing shoes, Tim. Yeah, that's because true. Because I am very interested in acquiring a hookworm. <laughs> yeah. That is the number way number one way of or, or getting a piece one. of glass. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, Tim, mm-hmm. for our viewers playing at home, and you know we're waving to you right now in the live feed because Zuckerberg's watching. I constantly wave. Um, I never stop waving. <laughs> you've got some kind of materialed shoe form on your footsies. Yeah, this one's what the kids are calling UGG boots. UGG boots, yeah. you say? And did you know from Australia? Did I know from Australia? Did that I, wasn't a complete sentence. It, did you know they're from Australia? <laughs> are, are they? Yes. I think I did because I was born and raised here. <laughs> yeah. And also we agreed upon this subject this before topic. the beginning of this episode. For yeah. anyone not following that fodder or segue, we're talking about Ugg boots today. We are. We are indeed. U double G B boots. That's how it's... Tim, but tell me about Ugg boots. First those, of all, are you comfortable? I am very comfortable. I've had these same Ugg boots for many a year. Those ones? These specific they ones, They look very yeah. clean. No, that's what I always get when I tell people <laughs> I've had them. For I've had these probably like upward of 10 years. Christ. Yeah. That's impressive. It's very impressive. I have shoes for a day that get dirtier than that. And the other thing is, like through uni and stuff, I used to wear them outside all the time, but they're still really clean. I have seen you on Macca's runs in various cities. Mm. I think Canberra as well. We've yeah. been on Macca's runs with Ugg boots on. I'm a big fan of the winter Macca's run in the Ugg boots. In That's the me. Um, tell so me what about are them. they? What are they? I don't know. Oh, right. Okay, me. Wait. <laughs> so those who uh, don't live in Australia, New Zealand, or I know they're quite popular in the UK and the US as well. Yes. Um, and probably other places. They're a unisex style of sheepskin boot. The shoes themselves are unisex, or yeah. they're yeah. for unisex. No, they're uh, they don't <laughs> conform to your heteronormative uh, thank God bounds. Um, I'm going to argue that point a bit later yeah, on about the do. unisex nature of Ugg boots. Well, it, yeah, let's not let's not go down that path. The boots typically made of twin faced skin sheep, so you have the fleece on the inside, and on the outside is like a tanned outer surface or a synthetic kind of surfacey sole. Yeah, it's almost like a it's almost like a, a fake suede. Yeah, sort of. And sometimes you can get fake fleece on the inside as well. It's not always real stuff. Yeah. Um there were a term Ugg boot itself originated in Australia. Um but they kind of came from Australia and New Zealand sort of, I nah, guess, nah, maybe. No. Nah, nah, um nah, I don't think so. 
They were often worn by surfers during the 1960s, and in the 1970s, they were introduced to the surf culture of the UK and the US. Ganali. The so surf I'm culture sure they... of the UK? Sorry, what? Apparently, they do have a surf culture there, even though it's cold. Is it internet surfing? Yeah, Like, what perhaps. do you... I don't know. Where are they... With what means are they... I don't know the answers to the questions you're asking. <laughs> Um, I didn't finish they it became already. a fashion trend in the US in the late 1990s mm. um, Worldwide trend in the 2000s I Hashtag think you, We all remember those days Hashtag Mr. Worldwide Yeah um, Predominantly used as Excuse me as, as slippers though Or associated daggy fashion Yeah which And uh, bogan culture oh. Wikipedia says here Wikipedia is well, on point today um, But originally they were kind of used Um by actual sheep shearers out in the sheep shearing atmosphere place sure. environment, out in their natural wild <laughs> sheep shearing environment. Ladies and gentlemen, as yeah. you can see over there, there is a bunch of sheep shearers in their natural habitat. Ooh. Hey, gown. Yeah. <laughs> or get out of here. <laughs> Wait, get off my property. Um, um, so a little bit of the history. Uh, sheepskin boots, I guess they're slightly different to that um, were known in rural Australia during the 1920s. So they kind of come from way back then. Um, they, Like I said, they were worn by shearers because um, they found them resistant to wool yoke. Now, what is wool yoke? Oh, I, no, I don't think I... No, it's, we're good. It's like a we're, weird, hey, waxy substance good. that's secreted by <laughs> animals that produce wool. The audience will know that I have said we're good, so it's their fault that we got that far. Yeah, soz about that, mate. Yuck, sheeps have yolks when you crack them open. (laughs) Yes, you clearly didn't listen to my explanation (laughs) at all. Um, Commercial manufacturing date is unclear, um, but it's reported they were being manufactured in 1933 by Blue Mountains Ugg Boots of New South Wales. Which I used to drive past every day and they have a big sign that says the original Ugg Boots. Yeah, so but the origin of the term Ugg, also not quite clear. Mm. Um, Stedman, which is another company I'm assuming, registered the name Ugg Boots in Australia in 1971 and 82 registered the Ugg trademark. But um, I thought Ugg Boot was short for Ugly Boots. Possibly. That's because they're not one yeah, or fug boots. Fug boots. <laughs> fug Fugly boots. Yeah. Um so I think even though they've got that like the trademark and stuff, I think it's pretty hard for them to Police it? Police it, yes. Wow, that was a pause and a half. Yeah, I was trying to think of the right word. Yeah, no, because like you can get Ugg boots and stuff from um from Kmart, mm. but I don't think they're called Ugg boots because Ugg boots is the trademark name, but they are like they've got fleecy insides yeah, and it's they're exactly the same. same. Everyone just calls them Ugg boots yeah, regardless. No matter where you get them from. Um, so surfing helped to popularize <laughs> it, it apparently. Um, advertisements for Australian sheepskin boots first appeared on the Californian surf magazines in 1970. Okay. Um, by the mid 1970s, um, there was a couple of surf shops in California. Um, in Santa Cruz and the San Fernando Valley. I'm not 100% familiar with that area. Um, selling a limited number of the boots. In 78, Western Australian manufacturer of sheepskin boots, Country Leather, advertised out Australia, outside of Australia for distributors to sell their boots. So they started selling outside, and it just became more and more popular. Um, by 1994, Ugg boots had grown in status among surfers in California, with 80% of sales in Southern Orange County, where Ugg Boot Holdings saw an increase in sales of 60% on the previous season. Way to read that sentence. Yeah, no, because uh. <laughs> there's no way I could possibly come up with that out the top of my head. So you know that that's real. Well, it's more the way that you read it. Um, here's the thing about Ugg Boots and surf culture. You know what I would think would be the worst thing to put in Ugg Boots? Sand. Sandy, salty feet. Yeah. Like, it I feel like that would be disgusting. yucky. The wool would be yucky. The wool would go so gross so quickly. It'd be dry and crusty. Yeah, apparently that's what we have to thank for the spread of Ugg boots uh, around the world. We can thank service for a couple of spreads of certain things, but one of them is Ugg boots. Hey, Um, They're not considered fashionable. No. They never really have been, even though they did take off as a bit of a craze there Mm, for a while. They shouldn't ever Um, be considered fashion. Yeah, they're associated with daggy fashion sense, which I have. Bogan behaviour, which I think I display more than mm-hmm. enough of, um, and the outer suburbs when worn in public. Uh, what does that mean? 
the outer suburbs. What are they referring to there? What are they trying to talk about? What are they t- talking about? Like outer a, suburbs a kind of where? Of a, like a western uh, uh, suburbs like of Sydney vibe. Is yeah, that what they're maybe, saying? Uh, maybe no. Nah. It could be oh. eastern suburbs. It could be anywhere at the moment. Everyone bloody wears them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. me. Don't like hot feet. <laughs> yeah, sure, whatever. Um, Decker's solicited. Decker's must be another brand. Um, yeah, all these brand names that we don't endorsements know. from celebrities. So they, here's some celebrities that have endorsed oh. publicly endorsed Doug boots. If Olivia Newton Johnson on the list, I'm walking out. Oh, she's not. <laughs> Kate Hudson. Okay. Yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker. Mm, okay. Cameron Diaz. All right. I'm seeing a theme. Jennifer Lopez. Theme broken. And uh. here's the, here's the big one. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, Leo. Leo himself. I heard he wore them all through the Titanic press. Yeah, That's obviously. What I, heard. I wonder if he's still wearing them now after the Oscar win. Oh, definitely. He's probably got a pair of gold ones. <laughs> I say I won an Academy Award on the edge of it. Oscars yeah. and the Academy Award, the same thing. Um, um, so here's the other thing. Mm. They're mostly used as slippers, right? Yes. And you think, oh, yeah, they're warm. Yes. Oh, yeah, no, the sheep's getting that. That'd be warm, wouldn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, but apparently also good for cool weather. Like, cool, I like keeping hot you weather. cool in Keep hot weather. Cool. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, sheep don't look too hot during the summer, so... Yeah. Um, they come in a variety of colours, as we've seen um, predominantly in Kmart, probably, actually. Yeah, the Kmart uh, range is very good. Black, pink, blue, mm-hmm. chestnut, Ooh. and fuchsia. Oh, what's fuchsia? I have no idea. Fuchsia like orange or blue? Let's look up fuchsia. Well, while you look up fuchsia, I'll argue my fact before about, you know, the unisex nature of Ugg boots. Now, I oh. have no, like, stance for or against these things, but they definitely make Ugg boots that have extra fluff, the dangly bauble things, and, like, diamantes on them. Yeah. Now, society has told me that that is closer on the female gender side of things mm, which mm. is why i'm saying i don't agree with that but i think you can argue that they're not always unisex but i do have a pair of that in my cupboard yeah no i get where you're coming from what's fuchsia uh just to update everyone fuchsia is like an interesting purpley pink color okay yeah it's quite nice actually. i think i've got some i had some chestnut ones chestnut or brown they were roasting brown. on an open fire well mine were um, they were like a dark brown. Is that chestnut? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what they mean by chestnut. Because yours are tan. Mine are they? a tan color. Yeah. Like the, a camel. Like a, but made from sheep. Yeah, like a tanned camel. The yoke of a sheep makes it more like a camel. Yeah. Um, um, so there's other variations. You can get them with kangaroo fur and leather as well. Oh, that'd be good. Which would be interesting. I don't think it'd be that comfortable, actually. Kangaroo is so soft. Their hair? No, their hair's so coarse. I've, yeah, you felt the wallets. They're soft leather, though. Oh, the leather's soft, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 the leather, yeah. No, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not a bloody idiot. I've got a long bloody history with uh, kangaroo leather, don't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right, so you can get kangaroo ones. Yeah. What else can you get? That's it. Oh. That's, like, there is nothing else. No one has ever made it another product. Now, I'm sure you could probably get, like, llama. Whale. Alpaca. Whale. Probably whale. Dolphin. Dolphin <laughs> whales. <laughs> Dolphin. <laughs> Walrus. Sharks. Um, seals puffer fish look i don't endorse seal clubbing but i can imagine that a pair of seal ugg boots would be very good if a seal wants to go out clubbing in ugg boots that, it's none of your business <laughs> to be honest do they, do they wear one ugg boot because they've only got the one big fin or do they wear yeah. three do they sew two together like you could cut the slice down the back of them and then stitch them, them up that'd, that'd be, be nice yeah um yeah um, i feel like you can make them out of lots of stuff but the only real as well. maybe <laughs> Emus, fuck, who, who knows? Um, the only real problem, mm. now they are made from sheep mm. wool, mm. Uh, so it, it, it raises some animal right issues. Hey, if a sheep wants um, a haircut. Yeah, I mean, it, in Australia, it's actually fucking hot. Yeah, so sheep, give them a sheep do need a haircut over summer. Do you have to kill a sheep to get Ugg boots? I don't think so. Hmm. But because it said that you could put them on a synthetic, yeah, that's why I'm I just wondering what the animal to. rights argument is. Like, if you just, I think it's just the sheep. general animal rights argument that they are kept in captivity, and that have you ever seen a sheep being sheared? They're not gentle with them. Yeah, they don't love it. But can you imagine if a sheep didn't get sheared? That'd be like a mess. Oh yes, yeah. it'll be way too hot. And then they get not to be too graphic about it. They the poo builds up around their mate. They're bum, called their bum, dingleberries. Yeah. <laughs> Their pump wool and then it like starts rotting. Name. It's disgusting, yeah. actually. 
We're saving them. Um, yes, I don't think sheep shearing comes under animal rights. The captivity, sure. No, well, in 2007, Pamela Anderson would have had something to say to you. Oh, Pam. She called for a boycott on her website because Pam, of the whole situation. Pam would have worn the shit out of Ugboots before she got on her Peter bandwagon. Probably. And in February 2008, Princeton Animal Welfare Society um, staged a campus protest. Oh, um, campus. Princeton. So it was a no no back in 2008 to wear them. But now it's a yes, Princeton. yes again. Yeah, why Ten not? Ten years on. Um, and of course, we talked about trademark pr- disputes. I don't know if we need to go into that, though, do we? Because that's who cares? Oh, look, if we could go through it, it'd be great. I think the audience... No, it doesn't fucking yeah, matter. Yeah, get your notebook out. Here's the history of the trade book, trademark if you, disputes. If you believe the signs, the one in the Blue Mountains is the original one. Now, to give you p- paint you a vivid picture of the one uh, in the Blue Mountains, it's a dodgy shack, mm. is what it looks like. Because I think they've tried to keep like that. We were the originals... So it's like a, a, a shack made of corrugated iron, so mm. very much like a sheep shearing shed. Whew, sheep shearing shed. Sheep shearing mouthful. shed. And uh, outside, they've got like all the tables with like all the ugly on. So it looks like you're in the middle of Paddy's Market, mm. also with a sheep shearing shed. Mm. And it's on the side of the road as well. Like you drive past it on the highway, mm. and these guys are like, we're the original. I'm like, yeah, but also, well, I'm not buying from you. Like, yeah. You're also going to take my, swipe my car. Here's something. I would say the best place... To buy Uggies Uggies Or other related sheep um, Wool products Would probably be somewhere like Paddy's Markets Or a, a market stall Quite possibly Even better Go to the farm Just tr- strap on a couple of sheep <laughs> take, <laughs> take it directly from the sheep Wear the sheep as shoes You put your foot up on the sheep <laughs> Trace around it <laughs> And uh, Get your pattern out and start. Oh, I just hit the microphone. Yeah, Sorry about significantly. that. Significantly, uh, I look forward to editing <laughs> that. I, you get your pattern out and start just pinning it to the sheep. So you cut, <laughs> cut around. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. funny. Um, yeah, I don't know where I would buy my wool products from, but th- yeah. So anyway, yeah, th- th- is that it? Is that? Ugg I boots? think that's Ugg boots. Let's talk about Ugg boot culture, Tim. Um, I am uh, phew, semi. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not where we're going with this. I'm a semi-firm believer that Ugg boots shouldn't be worn out of the house. I say semi-firm because I know that I think I've broken that rule myself. But I do not believe Ugg boots go with jeans. No. I don't think they go with leggings. No. I don't think they should be... I think if you're wearing them, you have to be da- like dressed daggly, like mm. as you are right now. <laughs> yeah. But you have to be in Accurate. trackies. Yeah, trackies or even bloody, it looks horrible. But even if you've got like the short shorts on as well, like the pajama short shorts and some big yeah, uggies, I, I do like to put on short uh, shorts and some ugg boots. And, and then walk you, you got to be house. wearing just like a shitty singlet top or just a t-shirt. Like you can't try and dress to the nines, no, and then slap on a pair of ugg boots. No, 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 no. Although I'm, I'm all about context. Yeah, it's <laughs> ugg boots are a context kind of shoe. <laughs> Two thirty trip to Macca's. That's ugg boot time. Two thirty a.m. Yeah. Or p.m. the day after. Yeah. If you're still, if you're hungover, yeah. it's always Ugg boot time. Although, my friend at work, she's French, so, you know, take this as a grain of salt. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm burpy. Um, a grain of uh, frog salt. Frog salt. That's what they've got. We have chicken salt, they have frog salt. <laughs> um, no, she wore Ugg boots every day to work, and it used to blow my mind. And I never questioned her because I know that she was very comfortable. But I was like, how come no one said anything? Yeah, that's a bit much, isn't it? She was IT, so and like she was the calmest lady ever. So she could, she like, she can do what she wants. I don't care. And then she was pregnant. I was like, you can definitely wear boots if you want. Oh yeah, but uh, gentle on her, on her feet. footsies. Mm. But um, you know, is it office attire? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go with a hard no. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. me. The worst UGG boots I maintain are like the thigh highs. Oh yeah, you know you get the really high ones, and they got that weird strapping on them, like they're fucking Viking um, shoes, Inuit, yeah, yeah. Inuit boots or something. Yeah. It's like we, it's Australia. Relax. You've got an all right. I've had mine a little bit higher than yours before. You've got about the quarter size, just past the ankle. Yeah, the mine are very standard. Like yeah. if you said to someone, "Show me a standard pair of UGG boots," yeah, this would that. be probably in the top three. Yeah, and then it, I think it's those, and then there's some. So Tim's got about just above the ankle, and I had some that were probably a third the way up my leg. Is that mm. ankle? <laughs> is yeah. Where does your ankle stop and your calf begin? <laughs> All leg is ankle. These are the sorts of uh, fucking difficult questions, questions we, we need to be asking. Let's take the question of where does your earlobe end? Technically, your earlobe doesn't end until you get to cartilage. 
um, which is a fair way up your ear. Interesting. Anyway, you put Ugg boots on your ears. Um, I haven't had a pair of Ugg boots in a long time, and the only pair that I've ever had that I remember were a brown Kmart pair. But again, they lasted me for a while as well. Yeah, yeah. Mainly because, here's the issue. So, part the curtain, the kimono, and behind the <laughs> scenes. I hate wearing shoes anyway, which I think people probably already know from this show. Um, but I am, as I posted in the group the other day, unlike the Americans, I am completely against wearing shoes in the house. Oh, yeah, definitely. But even slippers. Ugg boots to me, because that... Be- See, the issue with Ugg boots, they have a hard bottom. So they have a shoe bottom, whereas slippers usually have a softer bottom. So Ugg boots feel like shoes. But, like... If I've got Ugg boots on, I'm not going to want to put my feet up on the couch. Well, I take them off if I'm going to put my feet on the couch. Yeah, but then why put them on in the first place? Because I don't want to walk around on the cold floor. Oh, you don't want to have cold footsies. Oh, you'll get get cramps. Oh, no, that's good for cramps. You walk around on the cold floor. (laughs) Yeah, Um, right, mate. No, I don't. So that's why I think mine lasts me for a while because I wore them every once in a while, Mm. but not too often. And I always get tempted by slippers. I always see slippers and I'm like, damn, I want a pair of slippers. Remember when there was that... Time period when novelty slippers were all the rage. Oh yeah, like the barefoot and like barefoot the one. Yeah, ones. like yeah. you couldn't go into a Target or a Big W yeah. or a Kmart or one of those stores without just seeing a lot of them around, especially around Father's Day. Oh yeah, those fuckers were out there. Dad had a tiger pair, I'm pretty sure, and yeah. I had, I had a pair at one point as well. I more recently had a pair of slippers that were, like, enlarged converses. Right, like they they were made to look like Converse, like they had the white front and back, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they were like multicolored, but they were like huge slipper size, interesting, almost clown shoe esque. Mm. Um, but we're not talking about those; we're talking about Ugg boots. But yeah, I, and then Ugg boots as well, as we said, because you can't police it. Everyone makes them, but like you know, I think I had Star Wars ones for a while there as well. Like you can get them with all different things. On the oh, side. they're a blessing. <sighs> Do you reckon anyone listening to this wears Ugg boots? I'm probably they're probably wearing them right now. Let's give them a moment to scream. If you, feel you like if you wear Ugg boots, give us a yell. Couldn't hear because of how time time is linear. Time is so I couldn't hear. Times of the essence. But we'll assume everyone's wearing in the future. Them. Yeah. I don't hate you because you wear Ugg boots, but you wear Ugg boots because I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, they're not that bad. As I said, just don't. They just there are some outfits that you do not wear them with. Yeah, for but a death. good old. Ugly boot. I still maintain it short for ugly boot. Yeah, fug ugly. <laughs> hey, pop quiz slash short pole. Mm. Um, <laughs> not mine. Uh, if <laughs> Radio. Fugly, mm. back in my day, I remember using fugly for face ugly. Oh, so no. if you were ugly in the face, it was fugly. But I also know that fugly is for fucking ugly. Yeah. So I want to also hear from our listeners if I'm the only one who used fugly for face ugly. Because, you know, you've got your ugly, then you've got your face ugly, <laughs> then you've got your body ugly. Is Leon ugly. fugly face ugly or is he fugly <laughs> fucking ugly? That's what we want to hear. I really need, it. I need that clarified. <laughs> yeah. Is it a whole thing or just part of me that's yeah. bad? Um, Tim, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you shared that knowledge about Ugg boots. But right now, I have a dad advice for you. Oh, okay. Here we go. So, I am just I shook my head to... <laughs> yeah, I did wonder what was going <laughs> on there. Had a twitch. Dear Tim and Leon. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> My name is Keith, and I am a long-time listener, first-time dad viser. Mm, okay, so it's probably written into another segment before. Yeah, don't vice your dad. Um, I am 19, mm-hmm. and I've just started dating on Tinder. Interesting. Interesting. Sorry Interesting, about Keith. the name at 19. Dad, yeah, Keith. <laughs> Keith at 19. Hey, look, it's my middle name, which is fine, but as a first name... Um, I have been on a few dates with this girl, mm. and I think we're moving into something more... Serious. Oh, okay. She's coming to my house next weekend to watch movies. Ah. And I have no idea how to dress. How casual should I go? How relaxed should it be? Also, what should we eat? Your wisdom is needed, and I look forward to your guidance. I hope you enjoy the Japan oh. tour, and maybe even a show in Korea now with the war coming to an end. I know you guys had a hand in that too. Oh, yeah. Did we? We had a lot going on behind the scenes. Thanking you, Keith. I've been up most this week take fielding calls from oh, um, yeah. King Jong Un. Yeah, and I wish Moon. Should have never given him my number. President though. Moon. I was going to try and say the uh, President Moon's full name, but I don't know his first I'm name. I'm getting WhatsApps from Kim <laughs> yeah. Jong at all hours. Yeah. <laughs> Leon, you up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey man, just need no, to chat. No, Kim. <laughs> Thinking of ending the war. Good, Kim. I'm yeah. sleeping, mate. Fantastic. Uh, um, what was the question again? So the first question is. 
um, how casual should they dress? Oh, how casual okay. should Keith dress? And how relaxed should it be? So we'll answer that question because then the second question is about food. How relaxed should you dress? Yeah, because here's the thing. Like if I if I could possibly get inside Keith's mind of writing this letter, if I if I could just like it, it's yeah. if I could do if you that, could connect with the could material, connect with the character yeah. that is Keith. Um, I would say that you have two options because you either dress as you normally would. So I'm thinking probably maybe a button up some chinos, roll up the sleeves, obviously a bit casual. No, you're just at home. But this is what I'm saying. That's how you could dress and maybe some shoes on for when the person arrives. But like, because again, like we don't know how many dates he's been on with this girl. It could yeah. be a month in or so. And and she's coming over. So because the other option for Keith is to wear fucking tracky dacks and a t-shirt and his Ugg boots. But if she comes over and she's coming from her house to his house, she might come over dressed date appropriately, mm. Mm. not sleepover appropriately. Mm. And unless she's brought a bag, just like if they, ha- I don't even know if they're having a sleepover. There's a lot of unknowns in Keith's story that I, I think he should have answered. For yeah, Keith maybe should have been a bit more forthcoming <laughs> with the <laughs> details, a bit more specific, and possibly written yeah. this just before. Um, I think. Oh, here's a play. Here's my play. <clears throat> I think. Mm-hmm. Dress, tracky dacks, t-shirt, maybe a funny one that you got for Easter from Nana. You know, who knows? And Uggies. Mm. And so that if she gets there and she's dressed to the nines or something, then you can be like, hey, do you want to borrow some of my clothes? Oh, hey, interesting. Hey, hey. And then... We are respectful of each other and we just make a decision on uh, what happens with the rest of the night. But it's, you know, whether she stays or not, it's up to her. Um, and if, if she does go home, she can take your clothes. I think that'd be fine. Or yeah. she can, you know, get changed. Interesting. But anyway, so the first part of my plan is I think lend her some clothes because that's uh, a bit cute. Mm, I think you got to go one of two ways. I don't think going the full full hog formal is what you want to do. Hey, I do mean, not go the full hog you can unless go full everyone's hog okay later with on, it. but straight up the bat. You, hey, there we are again. It's a lot of dick, dick. puns. Um, no, you, know, you want to go around. like a halfway. So uh, <laughs> you want to be semi semi hard dressed. Sh- um, maybe, but yeah, you got to kind of look. Casual formal, so maybe a t-shirt and chinos. You're sitting in the halfway Ooh, zone, you know okay. what I'm saying? The other option is you chuck on a condom and you just greet her at the door <laughs> completely naked. Uh, and then she should leave. Yeah. Unless she's into it again. Unless she's into it. I mean, it's fun. really dependent on where you're at. That's a real... That'd be a power It's a play. bold move. It's Ugg a boots, of course, move. though. You don't want to get cold feet on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you wear for the date? Ugg boots and a condom. Yeah. With a flaccid. Uh, <laughs> or you could do a half-half and you could dress the top half in a button-up shirt with like a tie <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the bottom half trackies and uggies. Yeah. It all depends on what she's wearing. Yeah, it does. But you also have the, the, the grace of being at home because you could also do the play that if she rocks up and she's wearing uggies and stuff and you're in your formal clothes, you can be like, oh, sorry, I just got home, so I'll just get changed. Yeah, or yeah, 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 you could yeah. go the other way and be like, "Oh, sorry, I, I, I just... sorry, I don't do anything with my life. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm a real deadbeat." <laughs> sorry, I was just watching four hours of porn and I've got to get changed. <laughs> so I actually forgot you were coming over. To be honest, <laughs> who are you again? Um, but yeah, yeah. I think you, because you're at your house, you have the the yeah, safe yeah. Second question, Keith. Again, one that I know may have crossed your mind when writing this, and probably should have gone through it more. Do you live with your parents? Because that also plays a part in this. Yeah, you can't pull the no clothes condom. <laughs> you can't pull there. a condom at the door yeah. of your parents. <laughs> or you can. I don't know what your <laughs> at situation least put a is. Shirt yeah. on. Um, because that would also be interesting. I don't know. What are you watching as well? Like, if you're watching a saucy movie, if you wear trackies, she's going to see your job. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets a job watching saucy movies? Sorry, you're 13 years old? Jesus hey, Christ. If they have one of those scenes where they're kissing <laughs> and lying on top of each other, completely clothed and totally covered, I'm not going to be in control of my body. Gee whiz. Um, He's 19. Yeah, no, you that's... You the chub at the drop of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically when a hat's yeah. dropped. Oh, God. Oh, don't drop your hat. Oh. <laughs> um, look, foods you want to be looking at? What foods? Uh, <laughs> Footy franks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some za. Uh, pizza. Twinkies. 
<laughs> phallic shaped foods is what Leon seems to be joking about. <laughs> Hot dogs. <laughs> Different <laughs> way <brands>. Raw carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Eggplants I'm gone yeah, <laughs> I don't oh, even know I shit out too much of my life earlier And I've lost all control No, but um, Sushi or zar I reckon those are Sushi? Two. Yeah At home Back yeah. in my day um, I'd be going You gotta have snacks first of all So you wanna have some Doritos Maybe a bit of salsa A, bit a, of salsa. a good salsa or a guac Mild A guac <laughs> Make your own guac <laughs> Um, if you make your own guac, you're going to impress the shit out of it. Doritos, Pringles. If you're watching movies, popcorn is always mm, a safe bet. Mm. Popcorn, Maltesers. Go the extra mile. Um, it might be nice to have some ice cream for after dinner and movie. How much are you fucking eating? Jesus. You know what happens when Elise and I go places is that we buy so much food and we you never do. eat it. Yeah. Because I'm always afraid and always That's hungry. too much food involved. Um, Sorry. But if you're ordering, yeah, pizza's good. Although, oh no, that's just me. I was going to say, because if I eat pizza, I get in a lot of pain and get quite gassy. I feel like there's a very big difference between your (laughs) date food. um, No, but I mean like your date food order and me being actually single, my date food order. Oh, I It's like you being in a relationship for five years now. Clap, clap, congratulations. Say it public on air. Thank you. Yeah, Um, last week. Your guys' date is literally just that. You get a bunch of snacks, a bunch of food, and dessert. Yeah. Whereas me being a single guy, having to actually impress somebody. You get steak tartare. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's eat as little as possible. Well, yeah. Because, like, also, here's the one thing not to eat. You're not having Indian. You're not <laughs> having anything spicy. No. Do not have a curry. <laughs> no. I have seen people on first dates eating Indian and curry before. And Indians like, are... You're going downhill. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an ideal solution. That's like there was that we were watching Frasier yesterday because Tim and I were batching out at home. No mm. women, hey. Hashtag bros before. Anyway, mm. um, <clears throat> we were watching Frasier and they were going to see the opera mm. and they were going to have a coffee before the opera for their date. I can't think of anything worse than sitting through an opera when you need a <laughs> shit on your first day because <laughs> you had a coffee. Like. You know, coffee cleans out the units. Yeah, but not necessarily <laughs> so much that you're going to be sitting through a three-hour opera. <laughs> could be. Can... Um, but yeah, so be careful. I reckon pizza is a good one. Sushi, maybe. Chinese? Kick it old school. Maybe. Some order, order in some Chinese. I think pizza is always the best. Order in some Everyone Thai Everyone loves food? pizza. Share a chicken pad to you. That'd be cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Tim just got... <laughs> <laughs> Tim just went up. Thai food is a good choice. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. With Uber Eats, you can really have any. Don't get burgers. Too sloppy. This section is this section sponsored by Uber Eats. Yeah. Yeah, bastard. I wish they'd fucking sponsor me. Don't Jesus. get anything Don't get anything sloppy. Because no. that's just a mistake. Um, yeah, I think we've covered food. Just get good snacks. Doritos, yeah. Pringles, popcorn, some kind of chocolate option. Like any of those combinations. I'm not saying all of them. Obviously, if I do it, it's all. Yeah. I wish I could have Doritos. Um, but like, you know, do some kind of combo. Yeah. That's our advice. It's our, our dad advice, our dad if advice. You will. Um, and Keith, as I said, mate, keep your eyes up here and bloody keep it respectable. Or yeah. your mother and I will come home early, even though we told you we won't come home. Hands above ten. the blanket. Hands above the blanket. <laughs> Thank you. If you live with your parents, are you doing the thing where your parents are out for the night? But they're coming home at 11. So you're getting this girl over at 7. You've you got to get, get her into out it as quickly like as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, watch a sh- watch like a kid's movie because they're like 20 minutes long. Yeah, um, That'll get you in the mood. Especially with a lot of hat dropping in it for Keith. Mm, um, right, that's hat our drop. dad advice. Tim. <clears throat> yep. Last week we talked about the letters that uh, Aaron and James sent the drawings that Aaron and James sent us mm. from their children. Yes, and I true. brought them down here this week just so that we could read them out, you know, accurately on it. Oh, they're beautiful. I, I apologize wait. if anyone can hear the cellophane. That's because there's a lot of it. Cellophane is a major component in some of the artwork, and it's been artfully um, stapled. Oh well, how else are you going to stick it to? Yeah. It? So I'll start with um, the drawings from Aaron's children. As I and so, if anyone that doesn't know, Aaron James, host of Unabashedly Obsessed, great podcast, great people, um, you know, great supporters of our of our move to get Korea to stop the war. Yeah, <laughs> they were really in support of that. Um, James took a lot of my calls late at night. Mate, <laughs> we've got James. 
Kim's on the phone. Yeah. Um, Un, so, uh, Jong Un, he wants to, um, he wants to end it all, mate. He does. So, uh, Aaron's kids are four and seven, two girls, um, and we have one drawing. Um, and Aaron's given us notes just because you know sometimes you gotta have those little blurbs next to art just so you yeah. know what you're looking at. Um, and Aaron says, "Beloved children's book character Fancy Nancy," saying "Bonjour." Apparently, now I just want to tell you how it's spelt on the. Uh, so first of all, we got Fancy is F A N S C Y, which is the traditional spelling. Fancy. And yep. Nancy is N A S C Y, so Fancy Nancy. Nancy. Uh, yeah. So I fancy think Aaron's nassy. wrong in her in her understanding. Yeah. Um, and bonjour is spelt B A N G S H O A R. So bang sure. <laughs> bang sure. <laughs> bang sure. Um, we've also got a picture of Tinkerbell, which is quite clear, actually, Aaron. You didn't need the label on that one because I can tell that one's Tinkerbell. Um, and then an- one from the, the four year old, which is <clears throat> uh, Scribble Scrabble, Ribble Rabble, Abba Gabba Dabba. Oh, that's what that is. Which I've been waiting for one of those for quite a long time. Mm. Um, and the last drawing, which is also from the four-year-olds, uh, is called a Scribble Scrabble roller coaster. Does the Scribble Scrabble Wibble Wabble Abba Dabba go on the Scribble Scrabble roller coaster? It's kind of a precursor to the roller coaster. Right. Okay. Um, and then we have. Um, I'm just looking at. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so then we have James's. Kids with, with the cellophane and the stapling, as you can hear. Ooh, auditory pleasure. Now I um I don't know how old his children are, but he's got a boy and a girl, I believe. And from the girl child, we have a, a drawing that is described on the back as I'm taking Matt for a walk, and he just fell asleep. And Matt is represented in this as, as a, a baby. baby. Yeah, and he is sleeping. There are. S's. We can confirm that he is asleep. Yeah. He's not really zedding out like normal sleeping people. He's hissing. So okay, <laughs> do yeah. babies hiss when they sleep? Um, and then the picture that we have from uh, Matt is uh, is my personal favorite. I'm sorry to uh, Aaron's kids. I'm sorry to Lorelai and Kaylee. And I'm sorry to um, Leela. But mm. Matt's drawing. Let me just paint you a word picture. Me marrying baby Leela and I'm angry. I'm destroying her when I'm marrying her. Yeah, the important thing to take away from this is Leela is a baby in this picture. <laughs> they both, you know, what they're trying to say as artists is that we're all babies. Yeah, at the end of the day, everyone around you is an infant. Sorry, I'm just mixing some cellophane still. Um, I just love the idea of while she's getting married, I'm destroying her. Yeah. Um, so that's our wonderful artwork. If you want to send us artwork from children or um, just yourself, please do. That was for our Patreon reward. Yeah. Speaking of patrons, www.patreon.com forward slash Yegaday. That is the mm. smoothest segue I've done in years mm, for this show. Silky smooth. Um, you can go there and support us from $1 a month and uh, you can help us stay alive and buy Ugg boots. Uh, thanks as always to Taylor Smell, T Smell, Smelly, T... Um, Smurly, Burly, Water, Girly That's what I've been calling it lately mm. uh, For our wonderful cover art And uh, Curtis Fernance of the Fern Tree Music Now there's a man who knows his way around an Ugg boot oh, I'm yeah, sure definitely. I'm sure of it um, I have nothing to base that on No No, but uh, he'd, he'd know he, he knows You get it, don't he you Curtis? Knows. You know what I'm talking about uh, thanks to the Ozcast Network and to Omni Studio for letting us have our podcast exist. Um, and I'm going to leave it there because we're running out of uh, time. We still have to record the Patreon episode. For all our patrons, I'm sorry. I know that I said that I was going to post our postcards and they've been written and we have them. We do have them. Um, can confirm. And they're still upstairs. They're coming. We're really bad at this. But don't let that stop you from donating <laughs> yeah, yeah. to our Patreon. Uh, Tim, as always, mm-hmm. yeah, g'day, Tim. Yeah, g'day, Leon. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Catch you on the flippity flop. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details.